guys, today I wanted to talk to you all about overhyped products on YouTube. There are a lot. There are going to be a lot of products out there that people are going to recommend to you and they're going to tell you, you need to go buy this, this is the best product, they're going to use it in every tutorial. Maybe they like it, but in my opinion, it is way not worth the hype. There are a lot of products out there that I have purchased because of YouTube and where I'm kind of like, really? This is what everybody else is raving on about. So first and foremost, I'm going to go through a couple of products that are not worth the hype and then at the end of this video I'm going to list some products that are definitely worth the hype. So I just want to go through a few and I'll kind of do a few of these videos because I don't have all of the products sitting in front of me because like I've said in multiple videos before, we just moved into this house <clears throat> and my stuff is scattered everywhere. I don't know where anything is. So I'm just going to kind of go through the products I know where they are. One of the products that I hated more than any other product and you might be shocked. Urban Decay Naked 1 and 2. I don't have Naked 3, but I will never buy it because I am not a fan. And I'll tell you why. It has nothing to do with the color choices because I think that the colors are actually super beautiful. However, in my opinion, I'm wearing, um, I wore Urban Decay shadows yesterday. I wore all shadows from the Naked palette because I wanted to just give it one more go before making sure to tell you guys whether I really hated it or loved it and I was so disappointed in the way that my makeup looked. So the reason that I don't like these shadows and the reason that I don't like any Urban Decay shadows is twofold. So I feel bad because Urban Decay is a cool brand. I, I like them, I think they're a good brand. I just don't like their shadows. I think that for the price, this is $52, $52 for that. And a lot of people love it, they swear by it. But what I don't like about the shadows is that so you'll see, like, they're super pigmented, they're very beautiful, and so you can kind of see they're pigmented, and when you swatch them, you'll be like, wow, the colors are so beautiful, and they are, they are really pigmented, they're very beautiful, they blend really nicely, until they don't. Everything's just looking real muddy, and real um, choppy, and the eyeshadows don't stay for shit, like, I don't know if it's just me, and you guys can tell me, is this just me? Maybe I'm just the one who doesn't like these shadows. But I feel like for the money, there are so much better options than these Urban Decay shadows. So recently I put up a haul where I showed you guys that I bought the Urban Decay Pulp Fiction palette. I shouldn't really have bought it because for one, I know I don't like Urban Decay shadows. And I knew before I bought this, but I really thought maybe it's just the Naked 1 and 2 palettes that I'm not a fan of. And it's not, I don't like the shadows in this either. I put it on and like you swatch it and you're like, wow, so pigmented. They're, they're great eyeshadows. And they are, they're super pigmented. But for me, they're patchy. Maybe I'm crazy, but they're super patchy. Like when I blend them out even there, like dark, 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 like lighter. There's dark. It's just not my favorite eyeshadows. And so I think these products are super overhyped. I think they're overhyped just for the fact that somebody on YouTube bought them, Urban Decay makes them, they're a high-end makeup brand, and people just want to love them. I don't like them. I will keep them, and I'm not complaining because I just think it's stupid to complain, but I'm just not a huge fan of them. Now, if you're looking for, if you think, okay, well, if you don't like the Urban Decay shadows, then what do you recommend for eyeshadows? Highly, 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 highly recommend Makeup Geek shadows. If you're going to pay for an eyeshadow palette, you can get more colors for less with the Makeup Geek shadows. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. I'm starting to get sick, so my voice is going away. They're really, really highly pigmented. They're very beautiful, and they're really inexpensive. So I would highly recommend the Makeup Geek shadows or the Coastal Scents 252 palette. This has basically every single color that the Urban Decay Naked 1, 2, and 3 have in it, except for it's a fraction of the price of one of the palettes. This costs $25 and you get 252 eyeshadows. And I know I've talked about it a million times, but why don't you own it? I won't buy any more eyeshadows unless they're Makeup Geek or I really don't think I will. And I don't think I will because I know I can get good value in these. The shadows that I'm wearing today, I applied at 6 o'clock this morning. It's about 8 o'clock at night right now, and they're exactly where I put them, and they look exactly like I like they did when I put them on this morning. And they are 100% Coastal Scents. So I just love them. The shadows blend out amazingly. The products are just, they're, they, 
they stand alone in my opinion and the price point is fantastic so I would say don't even waste your money on those high-end brands when people are like go get the Urban Decay Naked they're it's what you're paying for is the name and the packaging the product in my opinion waste the time Another product that has been highly hyped that I'm going to return that I actually super hate and you may be like, Christy, you put that in a favorites video not long ago. Well, it was a few months ago. <laughs> um, I put it in a favorites video and I'll tell you why. Because I thought maybe, maybe I liked it, maybe I didn't, I didn't quite know. I should never have added it into the favorites video because the favorites video, you've been trying it out, you use the product, you know that you like it, you have been using it daily, and then you should put it in your favorites video. I had not done that. I had just recently purchased it, but I was excited about Tarte. This is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation. Now, the reason I don't like this foundation is so many, it's like tenfold why I don't like it. Number one, the price point. I believe this was around the 40 something dollar mark. Super expensive for any sort of high-end foundation anyway or foundation in general that's just super freaking expensive what did i just do number two yes it's full coverage but it is very very thick like super super pudding thick very very thick which is fine i'm not a huge fan of super thick foundations number three the most important thing to me is it doesn't wear beautifully it wears very cakey um, I put it all over my face yesterday. I wore it yesterday to test it out with the Urban Decay, Sh Decay Shadows as well to kind of see. I wanted to make sure that I didn't like this product before I came on and just said, I hate this product. It sucks total asshole. But it does. I don't like it. A lot of people love it. I think that it looks way too cakey. On my nose after the end of the day, my nose is basically foundationless. Now, I won't telling you, I have not touched up my makeup other than putting on new lip product since... I, put, I did my makeup at 6 o'clock this morning. So if you're looking for a great full coverage foundation that is not the Tarte Amazonian Clay, I would recommend the CoverGirl 3-in-1 foundation. This is a fraction of the cost again, and it works better. It's not as thick, but it is exceptionally full coverage. I use this in, I think, my last tutorial, which was the intense, smoky eye Halloween type of tutorial. Really, really good, you guys. It's a beautiful foundation. It lasts all day. It doesn't cake up it looks it's very full coverage it's very like porcelain doll skin look beautiful i highly recommend this i do not recommend this maybe maybe somebody would like this but i really really don't and i think i'm going to return it even though i've had it for a while i just it's hard for me to let it sit in my drawer and not get used my third product that i'm going to mention is not something that i hate and i still use every day but i don't necessarily know if it's worth all of the hype that surrounds it on youtube and that is the Anastasia Contour Kit. I'm not saying this product is bad. I'm not saying anything about it other than it's not a revolutionary, amazing thing that you couldn't dupe out with other products. It does work fine. The, color, the colors that are in it are good. I like the way that they look. The way they apply is a tad bit patchy in my opinion. It's not horrible, but it's not amazing. So and I don't really use these ones as much. I did use the banana shade under my eyes to highlight one day, and I was not a fan of the way that it looked. I'm really not a fan of setting my under eye makeup. It's just my skin in general. But I think this is a fine product. I just don't know if it's as good as everyone makes it out to be. Everyone makes these products to seem like they are be all end all you have to get these oh my god pick them up and i'm telling you why they're telling you that is because they're getting paid to tell you that i will only do an honest review and to be honest i don't get very many of these and i'll tell you why because i'm very honest and because i say this is a fucking shithole this is not this isn't i shouldn't have held that one up when i said it but i'll hold up a next one that i really didn't like at all so i just want to let you guys know that i, I hardly get any products sent to me to review for you guys on YouTube because I'm very honest and I don't I just don't want you to waste your money on something it's unnecessary just so that you can have a brand name product I did the same thing and I regret it so just learn from my mistakes it, it's you know the past is the past the future is now now maybe I am wearing this wrong maybe I feel like I'm using it via the directions I like the way it smells and that's pretty much the only thing I like about it. And that is benefits the professional. Maybe it's just that I hate primers in general. But when I wear this, my makeup slides off like a mofo. It is like 
just awful. I, I just really don't like the way that it sits on my skin. I don't like the way that my makeup applies. I don't like the way that my foundation slides around. I don't feel like this primes my skin and keeps my makeup on longer. I feel like it does the opposite and maybe that's just my skin type. But for me, every time someone's like, go get the Benefit Professional, I'm just like, no, 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 no. This was $10 for this puny ass. It looks so big when I hold it up to the screen. It's a little. But same with the Anastasia Contour Kit. That shit is so small. Like, you look at it and when you see it in the YouTube video and everybody's holding it up and they're like, my new Anastasia Contour Kit. That shit is a baby small. It's like, when I saw it, I was like, that's the contour kit? That's the contour kit? All right, yeah, it is, very small. I just think that for the money, you can get such better products. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of products that are not overhyped that I have mentioned in the past that people say, oh yeah, you need to go buy it, you need to go buy it, and is actually true. As all of you know, I'm a huge Josie Maron Argon Milk fan. Josie Maron in general, I always heard people talking about it on YouTube and I heard them saying, oh my god, Josie Maron Argon Oil, go get it, go get it. It really is great. Maybe other Argon Oils are good, but I really love the Argon Milk. It's changed my skin. I have no blemishes. I never do because of this. My skin is fantastic because of this. So. Another product that is massively underhyped on YouTube, which frustrates the shit out of me because it's such an excellent product, is the e.l.f. Eyebrow Kit, which I have mentioned in a couple of videos, but this is a really good product, you guys. It is so easy to use, and it's perfect for the beginner who wants really good eyebrows, but without paying a whole ton. Today, I did use my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. It is better than the e.l.f. Eyebrow Kit. I had just found it. I had totally lost it, and now I found it, and so I used it today. My eyebrows don't budge when I use the Anastasia, but my eyebrows do budge a little bit with this, meaning like the corner of the tail might like go away, so I have like a really short brow on this side. If you kind of set it with the powder side, it should be a little bit better, but for $3, you really can't complain. It's a really good product, especially for somebody that's on a tighter budget than spending, you know, 25 bucks on the Anastasia Dip Brow. But really, it's a really good product, and I, I think it deserves a lot more hype than it gets. So, I don't know, I just want to give you guys that there. That there. I'm just gonna finish this video off by saying not all high-end makeup products are bad, not all low-end makeup products are good, and vice versa. I want you guys to know that there are some high-end makeup products that I am obsessed with that I will use forever and that I really do love, and there are some low-end makeup products that I hate, and there are some that I love, and there is just a mixture of both. So you're gonna find both ends of the spectrum. Just don't trust everything that you hear online, what I would highly recommend. It's very difficult to do, but if you are going to buy any of these makeup products, try to go into like Sephora and purchase them, and I'll tell you why. Because for one, you can test them on your skin and kind of see like, is this even worth it? Because sometimes when you see it in person, it takes the, I don't know how to, I don't know how to like explain it, but sometimes when you, you hype up these makeup products in your head and you're like, oh my God, I cannot wait to get this. You order it, you get it in the mail. You're so excited and then you get it to your house and you're like, well, this is disappointing. If you go to Sephora, touch them, feel them, rub them in, put them on your eyes if you need to. And that really just helps narrow down, like, do I really want this or not? I can't tell you how many products I've gone to Sephora and been like, okay, I really want to go there. I go to buy this product, I try it on my skin. I'm like, eh, not my thing. Was really glad I didn't pay $30 for a little tube of it. And also keep in mind, and I am an advocate for returning things because these companies make millions of dollars. I'm not saying like, go return all the shit you get. But if you get something that you don't like, return it if you don't like it. Sephora, you can return things. You can return them without a damn receipt. You can get store credit. So if you buy something and you don't like it, return it. It's a lot of money to spend on makeup. Just because somebody on YouTube told you to buy it does not mean that it's good. I promise you that a lot of these people are getting paid from these companies. And I know that because if you look in the YouTube community and you see like, wow, this person, this person, this person, and this person all talked about Benefit Professional today in their videos. That means I can pretty much guarantee you that Benefit paid these women with millions of subscribers to tell you to buy the professional and gave that lady you know, $5,000 to tell you to buy it and gave her free product. And that's just not fucking right. I'm sorry, but I've, I've fallen into that scheme before and I just want you to know it's a scheme to get you to buy money and to get you to buy money. Buy all this money! It's a scheme to get you to buy product from these companies and it works, I'm telling you. I've bought the Naked Palette. I know so many people who have Vice 3, this, that, this, that. 
but those things may not be something that you love and if they aren't then return them and do your own research and like what you like regardless of the brand if your favorite eyeshadow palette is wet and wild fucking rock it rock that wet and wild palette but if you love your urban decay shadows then go for it it just really depends on what you like but don't don't let brand names anything all that needs to matter is what works for you that's why coastal sense is my shit because I can create any look that I want with Coastal Scents without having to spend an arm and a leg. I'll have that palette for the friggin' rest of my life because I have 252 eyeshadows in the most varying of shades. And if you want a palette that is very similar to the Urban Decay Naked 1, 2, and 3, Coastal Scents has palettes like that. I think they're called Coastal Scents Revealed. I'm not 100% certain on that, but they're cheaper and they're very similar, so you can really dupe it out a lot. I hope this video was helpful for some helpful. I hope that this video was helpful for Are you fucking kidding me? I hope that this video was helpful for some of you guys and at least maybe made you feel like you don't have to spend a million dollars to have great makeup. There's a lot of great makeup out there for cheap. So also leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think, if you guys agree with me, if you have any makeup products that I need to try that aren't hyped up enough, or what your least favorite products are that were really hyped up to you, but you're just like, really? This? So let me know guys, thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you at my next video. Bye.